where we are exploring our vital duty developing a sustainable water management system water is the source of life and today that source of our life is scarce if you are from city it is a common practice that sometimes it so happens that you don't have water for everyday usage and you purchase water tankers if you are someone from agriculture background there have been so many instances where you have experienced that all your plants have gone down the drain because there was no appropriate water management my grandfather actually took bath every day in a river in a fully functional alive river and it was normal my father took bath in ponds and lakes because it was accessible to them today just like you all i take bath with a bucket of water which is accessible to me today but i'm pretty sure it's not going to be the same few years from now to know more about this issue of water we have ram from friends of lake ram has invested about 2 to 3 decades of his life him and his friends have done massive work in the space of water conservation let us hear from him sir why should we focus on water conservation very selfishly save your own future we don't want you to save others future at all <laughs> my name is ram prasad and uh, co-founder of uh, friends of lakes let me tell you i was at the age of 10 when we started uh, this friends of lakes that was because our elders told us to take care of the lake and now we are in around 22 lakes in uh, bengaluru and with more than uh, 4000 volunteers who volunteer especially for the upkeep of their local lakes water is not a resource and it is a source that means if tomorrow there is no water there will be no more life here we are talking about algae the amount of uh, pollution that happens inside the water due to sewage entry or due to industrial effluent entry uh, we have a problem over there and at last we have lost that whole either a river or a lake or a well or even a bore well this water needs to be conserved that can happen only if you are selfish about yourself to save yourself you need to be little selfish and that selfishness is good of your selfishness maybe not only you are saving yourself but you are saving all others where actually as you as a volunteer actually show a difference so there are the three important water sources we divide it into deep aquifer then there is shallow aquifer and there is the surface water first i'll start from the deep aquifer and what do you do there is to push the water into the ground shallow aquifer is where in the water is in the weather zone or in the soil profile there also it is only through surface water being pushed into that area and that is where even lot of contaminants also get pushed now how do you do this pushing of water into the ground as a volunteer start requesting people around you to do proper rain water harvesting if you don't do this you will not be even teaching about rain water harvesting you will be trying to work for water okay today you are paying 20 rupees per bottle If you don't do this, your children will be paying two hundred rupees per bottle. Be careful. If true change has to happen, if true sustainability has to be achieved, it has to become a practice. Because sustainability is not a concept; it's a way of living. It's a practice, and the best way to learn this is to understand how people and practitioners of sustainability are doing it. My name is Ramesh Kikkeri. I started my journey of education from uh, ITI in automobile, and I have done my masters in environment management and healthcare management. Uh, I would rather say that it's a passion to go with environment. This house is completely masonry load bearing. It has got all the available uh, sustainable technologies like okay. solar uh, for the electrification, solar for the water heating, kitchen waste biogas instead of an LPG. and the rain water harvesting that is why this house has been named as sustira that is sustainable being the students of architecture and civil engineering the drinking water is is 10500 i think you know about it right or otherwise google and take a print out and keep it with you the water which goes through orally is only 5 plus 3 5 for cooking 3 for drinking so 8 liters per day per person except that eight waters rest of the waters need not be conforming to the is standards the distance traveled for a rain water will be total amount of contamination which happens to that so tell everybody that catch the water where it falls not only catch it start using it because it doesn't have any contaminations the roof area is 1300 square feet the sump size is 25000 liters so whatever the water is falling on the roof is collected at the sump and that's what we are using almost 8 months in a year we don't depend on the government water supply 
so can we go and talk more about how the water filter is being designed and how we are collecting the water please come the roof outlets are on the north side three outlets are there because of the area the pipe has to carry that much of water that's how we have decided how um, what is what should be the size of the pipe at the beginning it is 90 mm and at the end it is 110 mm there is 110 mm pipe which comes down it takes a turn and then there is a wall over here and there is an increaser it's a reducer put it in the other way this is 4 inches and this is 5 inches there is a grating stainless steel grating food grade stainless steel grating above that there is a 40 mm gravel and after 40 mm there is a 20 mm pebbles above that we have put charcoal activated charcoal also and then again not to lift those charcoal or anything from the pressure we have put again the 20 mm gravel it is you can see it is up to here so whatever the water comes from there because of the barometric pressure it goes up through the voids of those things where the suspended particles will be hold actually i told you in the top itself we have put this stainless steel mesh a zero mesh of this size stainless steel so that will also hold the suspended particles the small silt will also come down here because the water has to go from bottom to top it's a up flow filter so whatever the, the suspended particles will be hold here then it goes and comes back through this elbow and gets into the tank during the non rainy days we put this cap so that there is no rodents or squills or anything and gets into that after the rain we'll just take it out we we'll flush it whatever the suspended particles are there it will be flushed out only clean water i don't say pure water comes into this tank you can have a look at the tank so it is stored inside this you can see it is more than half full this water is non potable water so from here it goes for all the other non potable purpose for potable we have filter i'll show you this filter also see again whatever the water goes we'll pump it to the roof tank from the roof tank through with the gravity it flows to all the kitchen in the kitchen i have kept an outlet this is the inlet for this filter so this is a dual filter from here the water enters for flushing i have given two portions again similar to the rain water harvesting here what i have made i have put a grating stainless steel grating small pebbles then here i have put activated charcoal there charcoal only here activated charcoal silver and a copper from here again it goes to the second one in the second one similar thing with a fine coarse sand silica it has got silica with activated charcoal so there are two stages of filter it goes out maximum water contamination happens only because your because of your hand hand contamination is highest so that's why i here for the outlet i have used a health faucet okay for this health faucet even if you put your hand over here nothing can enter from here no microbial entrance so whenever you want you can just push it you can hold the bottle or glass you can drink the water almost all the things whatever i have done over here is do it yourself this need not be this two stage filter need not this i have designed for a office where there are more than 50 people for house only this much is sufficient even in the rain water harvesting if the water volume increases so you have to calculate the flow of water per minute it should evacuate through the filter so that's what is how that's how you design it initially this i made it about 9 years back so still it is working so imagine if you if you manufacture a filter if it works for 9 years it's good no let us say that you are taking the water from the government supply and you are drinking as it is there may be okay underline there may be a contamination in that water which you may not know but for sure there is no contamination in your rain water rain water is a purest form of water there is absolutely no chemical contamination if you look into is10500 nitrates are biggest threat right nitrates are biggest threat second is calcium and magnesium we call it as salt which gets uh, you know corroded inside the pipes and other things salt accumulation third one is any heavy metals you don't know what kind of heavy metals can come if you go through that one it can be mercury it can be cadmium it can be a nuclear perforation we can say how it comes you know the smoke detector it has got that one if somebody throws the smoke detector into a water tank from where it is getting pumped you can have that one arsenic of late almost uh, now 1 to 2% of the bore wells are getting arsenic poisoning which leads to carcinoma or cancer so none of those heavy chemicals lead for example the battery what you throw the used cell if you throw it gets into contact with the drinking water the river the water pumping station 
that will come back to you. None of those hazards are there in your rainwater. Change begins after awareness and it becomes our responsibility to bring in that awareness amidst people. And the best way to do it is to create immersive fun learning experiences. It could be in the form of exhibitions or micro workshops, but understand what is happening. We have to move towards the concept of how we can bring in these lessons to practice from concept to reality. As volunteers, you could understand what is happening and you could understand it from those who are actually practicing. Then you go back and teach. If it is for a small residence uh, with a uh, minimum of five to 10 people, this process is enough, sufficient for a drinking water. Each one, teach one. Do you think it's a good thing to be implemented in all the houses? If I build that house, I have to implement that. So we have to make sure that thing is reached for everybody. Not everybody is educated about that. People are thinking that it's a very complex thing, but it is not. As head of the institutions or senior professors, it becomes very important for them to have a bigger vision and uh, which sort of looks into the overall development of each student. Volunteering becomes very, very important because the kind of exercise which we did in few hours, our own students have learned so much, which otherwise would have taken a longer time. I think that energy is there. And what they tried to pass it on to the other set of students was really great. So that effectiveness in that short time and volunteering by self-motivation is very, very important. Consumption happens not because we want to consume, because we are unaware. If consumption has to be fixed, if water has to be saved, one needs to know what is actually happening on ground. Let us continue our conversation with Ram as to how can you start taking care of water bodies near you. Coming to the volunteering in surface water, a huge amount of volunteering will be needed. This conservation happens only and only by one thing that is stopping pollution of this water bodies. Two pollutions, that number one is plastic pollution that can happen only by you going and cleaning it over there. The second part of the pollution problem is sewage. So that is sanitation. And you can imagine if there is sewage coming in, that means E. coli will be very high. So cholera, typhoid and all those uh, diarrhea and all those kind of issues will be very high in that area. That means by your activity, volunteering activity of trying to see to it that the sanitation is improving in that area, you are also helping in health of the people around that area so that their uh, all this kind of diseases that is also taken care of. The first thing that you need to do is first identify the water body. Yes, here the condition was not so good when we come and uh, we have cleaned uh, most of the things here. Myself, Kiran Kumar Hill, Ashkan from the Department of Humanity Science and Mohan Master NSS Mysore. So, first we select the place based on our activities. How is the area? Then, what are the work is there? What are the equipment we, uh, we want in the uh, that We have to take that equipment. After that, we approach that local people also because we don't know about the depth. Without knowing, how can we uh, infer to our students? We have to take the permission from the local authority. Local authority means police station and corporation, either Gram Panchayat. We have to take a uh, help from fire extinguisher of also because he is the expert for seeing this work. Then, second step why we are going to that place? Why we are doing the Ramadan? What is the benefit? Our students will doing that work to learn something. When I volunteer with my group, I feel like there's so much to learn from uh, whatever we do. Number two, to identify from where the water is coming. You should be able to stop the pollution from entering into the lake. How it is coming, why it is coming in the feeder channel, and how it is entering the lake, and can we have some restriction? Then that also will need very regular care. Cleaning up the nalas also becomes a very, very important part. Many people go and do the lake cleaning. Now the nala is bad. Once the rain comes, all the thing gets pushed into your lake. What we find is just after a good rain, and when there's a long spell of no rain, you will see a lot of garbage entering into the lake. This is the time there will be a need for volunteering. Number three is now you get into the cleaning activity. Now the first one is to remove the whatever you are seeing in your eyes, to remove all those kind of things. Many water bodies are a little bit dangerous also because you will not know what is there below. 
we know there are incidents on when they went inside and there was sludge rather than being silt and they get caught into the sludge so please don't enter any water bodies so next is to see to it that you collect all the equipments that are needed uh, for collecting this and your dress code also again please no slippers and other things you may skid you may fall and we don't want you to land up inside the water so remember one thing good shoes where it is grip is there or else bare feet is also very fine in water bodies don't work alone if something goes wrong then you'll lose your life at least it should be a team of 4 to 5 people actually i'm not so much extrovert person yes i am an introvert person but we'll be speaking with everybody with friends we'll be just enjoying and doing this i always had a feeling that i won't be able to fit in into a certain group but after volunteering where i find many other volunteers who have been coming to do their work it has helped me to fit in and feel myself a little better whatever garbage you pick it up please drop it to the proper place you take the garbage and keep it in the corner of the lake in next rain they will again go back inside the lakes it has to reach the we call it as either meter recovery facility or uh, dry waste collection center it has to reach there that is when your activity is completed or is the activity is not completed we can volunteer for all your 300 hours only in going and cleaning and coming the very same spot but that will not be the way that sustainable things happen why is that garbage coming there in the first place so that would be the next activity for you to look at how does the solid waste management work in that area see whether the garbage collection the area that you are to know whether it is happening properly or not happening properly i like volunteering because uh, it develops a leadership quality in me how we work with people and also it improves the communication skills so if you are engineering students and if you are all focused on your career to be coding and always spending your time in front of a laptop this experience will really help you to a walk out of your comfort zone and you know get your mind refreshed yeah it's it's a good experience now that you have identified what problems exist in your local area and what are the suggested solutions it becomes your responsibility to take it to the crowd now when i say crowd there is no particular thing called crowd i always say this there is no public there is no crowd there are people and you are people change begins with you and all you have to do is find more and more use so all of you come together on a amazing rally so let's pull our socks and go hi my name is deepak i'm working as a full time coordinator in youth for seva in mysore today we gathered here to create the awareness especially the scarcity of water in our city rallies are conducted to create awareness among the public and for advocacy conducting rally is very good it's lot of fun before conducting rally we have to take necessary steps step 1 we have to identify the issue there's a lot of water issue in mysore city for the past few years itself we have a lot of access to water in all these urban places but then in rural areas there is a lot of water scarcity problem they know the importance of water but we don't at step 2 we have to identify the solution step 3 we have to take the necessary permissions especially from the district administration department and the local police station and step 4 we have to mark the location before taking the permission actually i would like to thank the traffic police they cleared all the traffic and the hopathon event actually uh, went pretty good step 5 we have to maintain the rules and regulations while conducting the rally like don't look into phones don't trouble the public especially we have to work with the state grow with the state it surely creates a platform for the discussion because as an individual we get to learn about water conservation and we can spread this information to others so now i am going with our rally save water, water. many volunteers ask how do we plan about all those things and they come up with intricate for you know planning uh, activities you don't need that remember when you are a small kid when you want to play cricket or when you want to do something how do you do it you don't go and make lot of plans you just call everybody you just sit together and you are started doing the work you enjoy the work and you do it many a times we are lone warriors in this and even if you are lone warriors we need to go forward if you are in a marriage hall if somebody has left the tap in a full speed ask them to slow down please you don't have to be arrogant you can say please can you slow it down so you can save water in a hotel if somebody has kept the water with the glass you can tell them please don't fill the water with the glass we will fill it when it is required because you are just going to throw this drinking water so if you stop these things to happen 
there will be lot of changes in the upcoming uh, days if you have any queries at all do feel free to reach out to us write to us talk to us we would be happy to help you out do check out our other episodes where we are exploring other aict activity points and other ways of creating and fostering change take care let the practice of seva continue what if i don't plant a tree today see the tree what i plant today may not yield anything to me but the tree planted by my ancestors is what i am eating the fruit on that note you can always think that i am planting a tree i am saving the water this is for my next generation you don't have to eat the fruit today only because you are supporting the next generation they will not curse you they will not curse you okay it is now or never